Okay friends, one of the first things we have to do is safely raise and support the front of our car so the wheel is off the ground. After that, we're going to remove all of our lug nuts and then remove the wheel. Let's come over here to our outer tie rod end. We're going to remove the cotter pin and then remove the nut. Now let's put our nut on there, just a couple threads, and we're going to bonk along here just to break the tie rod end free from the knuckle itself. Now let's remove our axle nut. Use a hammer and a punch, break your axle free from the bearing. Now with the wheel off of here, we have a nice clear view of our upper control arm. To start removing that, we're going to come right over here to our ABS wire mounting nut. Now with that down, we have plenty of slack in this area. The next thing we're going to do is come right up along here, remove this cotter pin and the nut, and get ready to break this free. Take that nut, start it on there a couple threads. Now we're going to use our hammer and bonk right along this area here. Now let's remove our flex hose mounting bolt right here. Just be careful because typically they like to break off. A little bit of penetrant will help you along. Now we're just going to come up to this area right here. We'll pop this out of the body. Now let's get under the hood so we can unplug the ABS wire. Now under the hood we're going to come right along here and we're going to find this orange connector. I'm just going to go ahead and push on this tab right there and then you can draw the wiring off. Now the next thing you want to do is look straight down this way right here. There should be a little push connector that kind of holds it to the body. Make sure you pop that off of there and then we'll start taking this through the body. In the wheel well, let's go ahead and pull this out of here. Now on the back side, we're going to remove the caliper assembly here. What I mean by that is we're not going to remove the slider bolts. We'll just go ahead and remove the bracket bolts right here and right down there. <laughs> Now let's remove the caliper. Set this aside so it's putting no pressure on your flex hose. Now let's get the rotor off of here. You're going to have two mounting bolts for that. Use a Phillips head screwdriver and get them off. Remove your rotor. Now it's going to be time to remove the lower ball joint nut. If you have a cotter pin, go ahead and remove that and then remove the nut. Make sure we got plenty of slack with our ABS wire. Now we're going to start separating the lower ball joint. I'm just going to put my nut on here so I can get ready to separate the ball joint from the lower control arm. Now as we lift this, we want to make sure that we're pulling our axle out of here. And you also want to make sure you're definitely not going to put a tug on your ABS wire in any way. Now it's going to be time to get the lower ball joint out of the knuckle. Typically you're going to use a ball joint press, something like this, to try to get it out. More than likely you're not going to be able to because getting a cup along the backside isn't typically going to work. If that's the case, do as I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this boot off, I'll cut off the stud right here, and then we're going to knock it right out with a hammer. Now I'm just going to wipe the grease out of this area right here, and then we'll continue on by cutting off the stud. Now the next thing we want to think about is making sure that we have our bearing studs on something that's soft so they're not necessarily going to get damaged. Also, on the far end of the knuckle, we want to make sure that we have it up against something that isn't going to be able to move. So I'm going to take my hammer and I'm going to bonk it right along here. There it is, friends. 
Now that we have the ball joint out, the next thing we need to think about is cleaning up the mounting area. We want to make sure we get inside this area, and then of course along the lip where the ball joint lip is going to ride. Clean all that up, and then we'll get ready for our install. With everything cleaned up, let's slide the ball joint in from the top to the bottom, just like this. So now we're going to have to press in the ball joint with our ball joint press. What you're probably going to notice, if you use a cup on the top end here, come all the way here, now you're not going to have enough room to be able to use the bottom aspect of the press. Unfortunately, when this is the case, you're just going to have to take the ball joint press up against the back of the ball joint directly, and then we'll put our cup on this side with our adapter and start driving it through. Double check your setup just to make sure everything's in line. You definitely want to make sure that as the ball joint's coming through the knuckle, it's going to have space to get through at the inside of this cup. If it gets caught, you could potentially damage your new ball joint. Now let's start driving it in. Once it feels as though it bottoms out, now we're just going to bonk on this area a couple times with our hammer just for a little bit of vibration just to make sure that it's completely in there. Double check the area just to make sure it's definitely in, and now let's get the contraption out of the way. Okay, so let's get this in the car. Start the ball joint, start the axle in there as well, push them both through, put on the ball joint nut, let's connect in the upper as well. Now let's get our ABS wire back inside the body of the car. Now let's torque this to 35 foot-pounds. Now the next thing you want to pay attention to is the hole on the stud of the ball joint and the slot of the nut. You want to make sure that they line up so we can put in our cotter pin. If it isn't lined up, you need to continue tightening until the very next one does. Make sure you peen over that cotter pin so there's no way the nut can come free. Now we'll snug up the lower ball joint and torque it to 43 foot-pounds. Once again, same like the upper ball joint, make sure that the slot lines up with the hole on the ball joint stud. Go ahead and slide through your cotter pin and then lock it in. Let's re-secure the ABS wire. Now let's coat the hub area with some copper never sees. Now it's going to be time to put our brake rotor on there. Before you do that, take a peek at the back. Make sure you don't have any buildup along this area right here. If you do, sand it off. Now we put on the rotor, we want to make sure that we have all of our mounting holes lined up. We'll start in our screws and then tighten them up. Now it's going to be time to get our caliper back on here and slide it right over the rotor. Now let's put in our mounting bolts. We'll snug them up and torque them to 80 foot pounds. Now let's re-secure our brake flex hose here. Now let's get our outer tie rod end nut on here. Torque that to 33 foot-pounds. Once it's tight, go ahead and put in your locking cotter pin, peen it over as well. Now we're going to put our axle nut on here. We're going to go ahead and snug it up. You definitely don't want to put it on with an air gun because you don't want to damage your bearing or anything else. Now we need to torque this to 181 foot-pounds. We want to do this, but we don't want this to spin on us. So I just have a bar that comes across and then it goes down to the ground to hold it for me. Once you have it torqued, you want to pay attention to this area on the axle right here. We want to make sure that we peen the nut down into that area. That way there it holds the nut on. Perfect. Now let's get the wheel back on here. We'll start all of our lug nuts, get the wheel on the ground, and then we'll torque them all to 80 foot-pounds. Torqued. Now let's get under the hood. Now we need to reconnect in our ABS wire. I'm going to go ahead and put in that little tab down there first. Now let's connect in the ABS wire. Give it a click, give it a nice little tug. Okay friends, we got the car back together. What do you have left to do? Go ahead and pump up the brake. After that, take it for a road test. Make sure you don't have an ABS light and then get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop.